a label says, would you guys be interested in, in doing a, a one-off EP? Would you be interested in doing that and being under Skyla's name? Maybe she watches. Hi, what's up, stars? Welcome to the local band Smokeout. Who can it be now? Who can it be now? We have a one cannibal music family founder. Jordan Blake. Give me a hell yeah. There he is. What's up, dude? What's up, what's up, what's up? How you been? How you been? I'm doing all right. My internet's not on, so it looks like I'm going to lag pretty bad. You're doing, you, you're fine right now. We're good right here. But uh, how is life, dude? I'm loving, yeah. I'm loving the hairstyle, the new look. It's, hell yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> How's how's Cannibal doing? It's uh it's doing. It's doing. Um haven't done too much new stuff lately. I uh, finally got my microphone up and started recording some demos and shit. How are the demos coming? I still went over to Joff like last week, I think. Yeah, fire. Right? Yeah, I'm excited. Fire. I heard that I was like, woo! <laughs> I'll send you I'll, I'll send the beat over so Josh can do some verses on it. Hell yeah. <laughs> It'll be fun. C- can we can we dive right in with Yeah, yeah. You did you get a chance to see what uh what Brian and Nick happened to say when we had them on the other day? Um no, I talked to Nick a little bit earlier. Um he didn't really tell me what y'all talked about, but he said he was pretty it's pretty cool for him to be in the chat with Brian. He hasn't talked to him in a while, he said. Yeah, it went cool. We got to we got to talk. I don't know, it's probably been years since they had talked. Yeah, he he made it uh Brian also said that he bumped into Corey at like a at like a, a grocery store or something and they got to hang out for like fifteen minutes and they hadn't seen each other in years also. But um he brought up some cool stuff that we didn't know as fans that uh you actually demoed some of the stuff that ended up being on wires. And I don't think a lot of us knew that. Uh, and you even went as far as to play a couple of sets uh, with some new material. And we were wondering if there's anywhere we could ever hear some of that stuff, dude, because we would love to hear it. Shit, I don't, I don't think we ever recorded it, but I do. I knew there was some videos from the glass house at one point. That helps. That helps us. I haven't, I haven't looked for him for a while, but I know that the, uh, there was some videos on the internet. Ooh. We got oh, a deep yeah. dive. Definitely. Um, uh, but yeah, like, we had, I had been in the band while they wrote the whole record, and then I had clicked really well with Kit Walters, the guy we recorded with, so I was just going to wait until I got into the studio with him to really uh, do my vocals. So, um... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm go- oh, no worries. My dog's barking. Hold on. My dog's barking like a little baby. <laughs> Have you guys seen my dog? No, oh, let's, see let's, let's, yeah, let's see him. What's oh, up, buddy? There he is. What's up, buddy? He, uh, <laughs> he was excited. Toby. He was excited to, uh, He's to come in. Kobe. Oh, look at him. So uh, Brian mentioned Kobe? Brian mentioned yeah, another Kobe. thing too that stood out to me, Jordan. He said that next year is the 15th year anniversary of She Watched the Sky, and if ever a time was to maybe possibly kind of get the boys back together for a jam session, seems like a very relevant time. Yeah, I, I found out today that it will be 15 years next year, which is pretty crazy. Time flew by. Is that, um, do you think you'd ever be interested in something like that? or? I know that I'm personally interested. Um, I know that we have six people to get together out of their, you know, their busy lives with marriage and babies and all that shit. But uh, I'm still doing, you know, music 100%. And Nick is. So I know most of us are down. We just got to 
you know, figure out how our um, how our schedules are going to work out. For sure. Speaking of speaking of that your schedule, awesome. how could I'd fly to that show? How could someone contact you, Jordan, to to book you for your services? Like if they wanted a feature or, or some writing or maybe a beat, how could they get in con- contact with you to hire you for something? Shit, I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, it easy to reach. Yeah, I'm everywhere. I sit on the internet all day usually. <laughs> Hell yeah. Are you down are you down to review a couple bands with us too? Yeah, definitely. Let's rock. Kobe wants to listen to. His name's Kobe? Uh, <laughs> Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> Same. Let's do it. RIP Kobe. <laughs> this is uh this is in ghosts. Speaking of ghosts. That's pretty sick. Speaking of ghosts, dude, do you ever do you ever still jam any of the Watch Out There's Ghost record just just on the side just just to enjoy I I some do. of that material? I me too. Yeah, yeah, I, st- I still every once in a while. What was your favorite record I, I from want, from I that? Wish... What was your favorite record from that album? Um, mine would probably have to be Sleeping at the Movies or uh, Ghost Town. Cool. Oh, yeah. no, I liked them all. They all turned out like so much different than I had anticipated. I, I remember last time we talked too, you said that, that that was the band that actually got you to like kind of tour the world and see see everything, especially if I recall if something about uh, maybe like in Asia or something, that was where people were kind of going crazy. No, oh, really? That's pretty yeah, cool. I got to do a lot more with that band than uh, I did with the Skylit. Um, Cause I pretty much like quit a Skylit drive and then jumped into watch out. There's ghosts like two months later. Well, it came and out as great. Soon as I found somebody to record it. I got the tour with them and I did 250 shows. Like the first year we came out. Dang. That's, That's a crazy. lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, Hell yeah. The, the record label that we were on, they used to run the bands like into the ground, like to where you were like, "Fuck another show!" Like this sucks. What, what but, was the label for that? Uh, Rise Records. Oh, okay, that was on Rise. Okay. Yeah, and they were a more uh, heavy band label, so I don't think they really knew what to do with the pop band yet. Yeah. I mean, they had Breathe, but Breathe had, like, left and went to Fearless already by the time we were kind of doing our thing. So uh, I think they were just throwing shit at the wall to see what stuck. And, you know, I pretty much got all the tours myself from featuring on um, artists' music and meeting them in the studio. Like, the Millionaires took us out. Yeah, I remember them. We had the same producer, and so they asked us to go out with them for 45 days and then uh came home for two days and then left for another i think it was 70. um we did drop dead gorgeous with he is legend which was strange but r.i.p r.i.p the the homie from drop dead gorgeous too what happened i think the 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 one of the members of drop dead gorgeous just passed away like a month ago i don't i don't know if top of my head his name or i I wish I could tell you more, but I don't recall. But if someone Googles it, they could probably figure that out. But yeah, that's... Oh, shit. Kobe. That's crazy. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. So we had a... We did a... That, that tour was 45 days. That was, like, a really, really long one. And it was during the summer. What's... And what's... then I got home from that one, and then I went out with Jeffree Star. Huh. What was that like? What was, what was hanging out with Jeffree Star like? That was fucking weird, dude. <laughs> I bet. I did get to meet him at Warp Tour. I like I I featured on one of his songs because I was in the studio with his producer, and he needed a chorus. And then I did the song without ever meeting the guy or talking to him. And he was I was like asking for pay, and he was like, "I'm just gonna take you out on tour. Is that good enough?" And I was like, "Yeah, that oh. works." That's a that's a fair trade, I would say. I know, right? <laughs> right. It was a sold out tour. Oh yeah, so it worked out. Is the song still like on the internet? I want to check that out sometime. Yeah, it's called "So Fierce." Can we play it on the stream? No, no. Jeffrey yeah. Star would shut us down for sure. What? What is the? Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. What's the most fun tour you've ever been on? 
Even if it was just like a short stint, like a little four or five day thing, what was the most fun? Um, well, with um, with Skylit Drive, it would probably have had to have been when we toured with Dance Gavin Dance and Pierce the Veil. The Double Deckers? That was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of partying. Brian and Nick said the same. Yeah, Brian and Nick said the same thing. They said that that the double decker buses were were a wild, a wild party experience. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were all really young. I know that I was the oldest, and I was twenty one. But in reality, it's like it's pretty young to be gone all year long, like Mm -hmm. trying to trying to keep up with all these other bands that you know at the time had more funding and you know cooler they all had buses and we were kind of in whatever we could get but um with watch out we did a tour with um attack attack and of machines and who else was on that of machines i think was like two members that went on to be woe is me i believe Oh, what was me? I think two members of, yeah, of I Machines. So. I know their singer like disappeared for like years. Like he like went black on all his social medias and uh, then came out with a solo project like years later. But the band broke up because he was missing, if I can remember correctly. Dang, that's that's no good. Dang. Yeah, but Attack Attack was a lot of fun. They were like at their peak and they were, you know, they were rock stars. They like break shit in the back room and, you know, <laughs> they were a lot of fun to be around. So let me throw out the craziest hypothetical ever. The boys hit you up and they say, let's all go to Sacramento, go to the old jam space, rock out for a weekend, play some old stuff, and then maybe book a couple shows. And those shows, I know this is a big hypothetical, and but those shows go well. They're all sold out, and a label says, would you guys be interested in, in doing a, a one-off EP? Would you be interested in doing that re- and being under Skylet's name? Maybe she watched the sky number oh, yeah. two, something along the lines of that? Yeah, I definitely would. Hell yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I- I I've think already I, told them that uh, if any if it works out and you know everyone can get back together, that I'm already 100 percent down to to go back to Sacramento and make shit happen. Awesome. Well, that just made me excited, and I hope that uh, yeah. it all does work out. Uh, I mean, I don't think that they've really seen how much people appreciate the EP because they've you know they've been out of things for a while, but. I've done multiple emo nights and at the emo nights I perform and I sing along to the EP tracks. And I mean, those, those shows are bigger than my solo shit and they're bigger than when I was actually even in the band. Um, so I don't know. I feel like if they could go to an emo night and see like how much people liked it, that they would probably be down. I know they are down. It's just a matter of this, you know, got to quit your job but if you go if you're gone too long and whatnot so we're just trying to we're trying to make things work i haven't talked to too many people other than nick um but nick and i were like we write really well together and that too like i really am trying to get you know trying to make a relationship with again so we could uh we can get shit going because it's a it's a good time for music right now Mm-hmm. Definitely. It seems like it's getting better with the like the royalty exchange website and shit. It's like giving bands the opportunity to sell rights to their music that doesn't take away from their money, but you know it makes people own a part of the band in a sense. And so you can connect with your fans and they can feel like they own a part of you. And I think that's really cool. Um, it's new. It's like NFTs or something. I'm like just learning about it, but. I don't know. I think that the EP, if it doesn't happen this year, it's probably never going to happen. So, oh, well, if you need our help, we gotta push it. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be happy to help any way we can. Uh, 
I have yeah, uh, everyone needs to tell their their local clubs and their promoters to hit us up and give us offers. And- if you need to come to Chicago, I've been in contact with a pretty decent venue. It holds seven hundred people, so I think I think we could work something at the Whiskey A Go Go, no problem in L.A. We got you. Uh, our one of our mods is is works there five days a week, and he does the booking, so that should be easy. Uh, I have I have two more questions for you, and then we'll jam some more bands. Have you? ever got the chance to hang out with jag or is there kind of like a sour we don't we're not really friends kind of thing well we played uh south by southwest um together one year and i wasn't uh aware that he didn't uh i guess he wasn't too fancy on me i didn't really like me too much i guess and i introduced myself and i was ready to you know hang out and shoot the shit and he kind of just walked away just kind of a bummer i don't know if it was just awkward for him or what but i've always been down to be uh cool with them i've uh i've heard mixed mixed things about his side but uh i mean he's always had my support i've always told everybody to listen to skylar drive when he was in the band um that's cool we shared you. the green room one day or at another show and me and Will from Dance Gavin Dance were chiefing it up, and it was all full of smoke, and he was trying to to warm up, and he got pretty upset. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was the last time I think I saw him. For sure. But yeah, other than that, we never really we never really talked. He kind of just uh, I don't know. The reason I bring it up is because b- fr- before I got to talk to Brian and Nick, um, I went to the the Skylar Drive Facebook. And it's totally dominated by his new project that has nothing to do with the Skylar Drive. And Loki, like, kind of made me mad. And apparently, wait, I want to check that. What the if, heck? If, if you go to facebook.com slash the Skylar Drive, yeah, I mean, I was... it has nothing to do with it. And and apparently, Brian I was genuinely and... heartbroken by that. Does he own the rights to the name now? Um. Uh, technically, he uh, kind of went behind some backs and, and uh, copywrote the band name. Yeah. Dang. Which, which is bizarre because I uh, made all of those social media pages with my own emails. And uh, he kind of fucked me <laughs> on that because not in this, it's like I'm glad he has a new band or whatever, but he didn't have to take our social medias. Like those were ours. Right. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the people have commented times, like hundreds of people commented this, the same thing. We kind of all are in the same boat on that one, which is total bummer. Oh but... yeah. I mean, he, he's turned like comments off on his shit because he got so many, which felt, which felt good because I, I announced to something about when it was like the 12 year, I made a post on Twitter and uh, Facebook and got like hundreds of likes and everyone was telling me like, we went to go, you know, post about it today, and the page is gone. Like, what happened? And then Joey told me he's like, "Yeah, he he stole all the pages. He changed all the passwords and locked us oh, out of everything." Oh wow! The merch accounts, everything. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, apparently I'm not even supposed to talk about the band legally, but I mean, I don't really give a fuck. Well, I mean, anyone, anybody that's anybody knows what the fuck is up, so I don't really feel the need to even defend myself in that sense. Fair enough. You heard it. You heard it there. So you're going to say yay to that one? Oh, yeah. I'm going to say yay also. Um, Four. I'm trying to find it. Five yays. What you munching on? That looks like a a sour candy candy cane. It looks like a sour candy cane. Candy cane. Candy cane. I have a candy cane button, believe it or not. I have I have a candy cane button. How did you have that sound on deck? So I have okay, so it's a lot of people wonder that. I have about a hundred and sixty graphics and sounds at my fingertips at all times. I just have to, it's on me to like know where they are and be resp- I like it takes so long to like load them in and stuff like right. like that's nasty or just w- whatever like there's so many different ones like I have to have them ready um for different reactions and stuff but it, it is a exactly. putting them together dude 
It takes so long. And I can... bet you can't even like label them because you probably change them and stuff. So like they're labeled like so ones that don't have a graphic if it's just the sound are white. Ones that have a graphic are green. The ones that are during the intro with the timer countdown are red. Uh, oh, the sponsors are what? blue. Like it, it is very. I'm really like picky about how I categorize it all. <laughs> But well, that uh, does sound at least a lot more organized than just having 160 sounds right there. So that does help. That is a yay. Nice. Me. That is definitely a yay. That was brutal. What do you think, Jordan? Jordan, do you ever listen to? Do you jam like heavier, heavier stuff like that on 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 the frequent or no? Nah? No. Not so much. Not usually. I appreciate it though. What was what was what were you jamming in high school that made you like want to be in a band? Who were some of the artists that you played back then? Um, Alpine Trio, uh, Thursday, Princess Bell, um, Armor for Sleep. Dang, I haven't heard that band in a while. And As Cities Burn. I listened to a lot of Copeland. Haven't heard that in a while. It's a bunch of nostalgia right there i love it to be honest with you i don't know a single one of those what <laughs> none of them you don't know census fail i don't think so census fail is a huge band you i, I think you probably What's know like, the, like main you probably know uh i'm stuck in a i don't remember what it's called I don't remember. Just if you type census fail music video, uh, buried a lie. Maybe? No. I don't remember. I don't How remember. How old are you, Josh? I'll check him. I'm 23. Not as old as oh, us. Shit. <laughs> so that's why. Yeah, they, I think they've been out of the loop for a while. We're 24. I'll check them We're out 24 and above, so that's why we know some, nice. some older jams. <laughs> B3 A's. Your hair's longer than I thought. Oh my God. It was, hi <laughs> it was hiding in there. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get it out of my way earlier. I was cleaning cleaning up my studio. Nice. What? Can't see much. <laughs> what uh what science I don't know the term. Uh chemical element do you have on on right there? Uh dopamine. Let's go. Hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Is that what they had in the background of that video? It just oh, no, wait, it's this one. It's this one. Oh, you got it? You got the, the background banner? I could not see it. It was... <laughs> yes. I saw... Oh, oh okay. there it is. There it is. So, Jordan. That's funny. Uh, we asked Nick and Brian... Your mic's, your mic's on mute, by the way. Uh, what their favorite song was looking back on their Skylet career, and they both picked the same song. It's off of She Watched. It has nothing to do with anything that Jag did. What song do you think that they picked? Um, A hey Nightmare? That is right, dude! Why hey. why that song? Can you tell me how the writing process behind that particular record and how the f did you know? Like there must have been so much chemistry the way that song was originally written. Um that song was crazy. Uh oh, nonsense. Um they had had the music done for a while and I just hadn't seen to practice and written to it cuz I had was fucked off or whatever and uh they were really worried about it and they like expressed it the day before the battle of the bands they were like you know we really want to play this tomorrow and we need to win because if we don't win then we're not gonna have the money to go record the ep in north carolina so like you need to write the song and i was like okay so i uh did what i used to do and it got high and i wrote the song and <laughs> showed up the next day and they still hadn't heard it yet and we played it live. And that was the first time they'd heard my vocals to it. And it went pretty good. And then we ended up winning the, the Battle of the Bands. And we got the money to go record the EP. And so the song just kind of, I guess, special to all of us. Because I don't think we would have won without it. 
because I think it was a step up from uh, all of our other tracks. So like Columbus and, and all the others were already done by that point, except for this one. Well, yeah, and a reason for broken wings. I wrote that one in the studio. Hell yeah! But it's, um, yeah, I love getting the lore. The back. The, the I love background. getting the Skyla Drive lore. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy times. They were uh, a lot of. I made a lot of last minute decisions and did a lot of things, you know, on my own without. You know, like the whole, I did all the vocals. Uh, I'd gotten like all my music, my CD stolen out of our, uh, out of the car we took to North Carolina. And I got really upset and depressed about it and wanted everybody to go home while I recorded the vocals. Cause I just got, I just got really lost. And I mean, I had like CDs in there since I was like, so in, this is when you were working with Kit? In sixth grade. This is when you were working with huh? Kit? This is when you were working with Kit? You did it, like, just you and him? Yeah, this is when we were in the studio with Kit. And Kit, always, I guess he, he knew that Stingers worked sometimes better when they didn't have their band there. And I had never done that before, and the band was really, really skeptical about leaving me because they wanted to make sure I was doing things right. I mean, I had a lot of loose screws back then. But... Um, I pulled my pulled myself together, and Kit had a lot to do with it. He uh, really inspired me, and you know, showed me that some things weren't as port was weren't as important as others, and you know, fuck girl problems and all this drama I had going on, and I kind of just put it all into the EP, and I guess it came out, you know, pretty good. I was going through a lot of shit, and he helped me channel that. I totally thank Kit for. You know, believing that I could complete the record because I mean, if you hear the demos and then you hear the EP, like I, I progressed a lot in that couple month period, and it was really stressful. But I had my whole band. I wanted to make them happy because I mean, they they recorded the music. The music was sounding bomb, and then I had to do the vocals, and uh, I didn't want it to sound like the demos. I wanted it to be like a completely different vibe and. Uh, I think it turned out okay. <laughs> I think I think like most it. of us would would probably give it a ten. I give it a uh, a ten, a ten, a fucking ten. Yeah.